Hi, I'm Mike Stanton from Build America Mutual. I'm here with Alex Weissman, BAM's head of higher education. We're here for a Credit Insights video about the $76 million university dormitory revenue bond issue sold by Florida Polytechnic University today, March 9th. The bonds will be rated AA with a stable outlook because they are insured by Build America Mutual and carry an underlying rating of triple B minus. Alex, thanks for taking some time to talk about the transaction. I'm happy to be here, Mike. So this is a relatively rare situation in higher ed where we're talking about a pretty new university. What can you tell us about the uh, university itself as a starting point? Sure, Mike. So established in 2012, Florida Polytechnic University, or Florida Poly. It's the newest university uh, in Florida. It's one of the 12 state universities within the Florida State University System. Now, as a point of distinction, uh, it is the only state university exclusively dedicated to STEM education or coursework that focuses on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It welcomed its first class in fall of 2014 with about 550 students, and it has since grown to approximately 1,600 students. Now, impressively, it's a rather selective institution, admitting roughly 44% of first-time and college applicants in fall of 2022, and the plan is to grow ahead count enrollment to about 3,000 by fall of 2027. And to support that growth, obviously, they need to invest in the physical plant. Now, the state has been very supportive of the university and has paid for many of the academic buildings and for some research centers. What will these bonds finance? Sure. Great question. So bond proceeds here will primarily be used to finance the creation of the university's housing system. So specifically, a portion of proceeds here will actually be used to acquire one of two existing on-campus residence halls, and the remaining portion will be used to construct a new residence hall. Now, the bonds here are going to be secured by revenues of the housing system that's being created after deducting for current expenses, as well as administrative expenses of the housing enterprise, and will additionally benefit from investors' reserve account. Now, rather importantly, there is that second asset that is not being acquired, and that is not going to be part of the housing system and will not be pledged to the bonds. And so uh, Residence Hall 1, which is the facility that's not being acquired, is going to be the smallest of the three facilities once the construction plan is done. My understanding is Residence Hall 2 has about 539 beds and is fully occupied. Residence Hall 3 will have about 430 beds. Why do they need the capacity? Sure, Mike. Great question. So an important part of the rationale for adding the additional beds is to facilitate the university's enrollment growth strategy. So based on the demand study that was prepared for the proposed financing, there is limited affordable off-campus housing in the Lakeland, which is where the university is located, or the area that's nearby to the university. So consequently, more than 50% of students currently living off-campus have to commute more than 20 minutes to get to campus. So part of the calculus here is to really help address these student housing dynamics, especially in light of the university's enrollment growth plans and strong demand for the existing on-campus housing. So that's a great growth story uh, in the long term. What are your concerns? What risk did you take a look at when you underwrote the transaction? Sure, Mike. So, you know, as BAM won for its due diligence process, you know, it was, it was very comprehensive. You know, a number of risks were identified, uh, not least of which is the fact that this is a relatively new institution, coupled with the fact that it's a fairly small institution as well. Uh, moreover, if the university's growth plans don't materialize, the repayment stream here, which is, again, that housing enterprise that's being created, may face some pressure. Now, I would say that ultimately, after doing a deep dive into the credit, after really getting to understand sort of what the university is, how it got there, where it's going, what the strategy is underpinning all of that, we're able to get comfortable with these and other risks. And actually, BAM's credit committee um, unanimously ended up approving uh, this transaction for BAM bond insurance. Well, thanks again for your time today, Alex, to talk about this transaction. A BAM credit profile is available about this transaction on our website for more information. And you can also email us at creditinsights at buildamerica.com. Have a great day. It was well, Mike.